by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Emno Biscuits. Prices of goods and services to be addressed. Digital operations underway for Royal PNG Constabulary. And the Betelnut ban to commence on Monday next week in Port Mosby. Good evening, this is National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. The Commissioner of the Independent Consumer and Competition Commission, Paulus Ein, has announced that a new order will soon be released to address the hike in price of goods and services. According to Commissioner Hein, discussions are underway with the government to have a new order in place to address the hike in prices of goods and services. Uh, we've covered in our earlier stories that uh, international indicators, global indicators, food and agriculture organization indicators, the shipment rates all are coming down. They are showing signs of decline in almost all areas of factors of shipment, uh, you know, production, supply. So there would be no reason why business houses should not be passing those cost savings to the consumers. Commissioner Hein highlighted that his team of officers will be going around to business houses to pass the cost of savings to the consumers and urge the business houses to not increase prices of goods and services unnecessarily. Getting a new order, we will be coming around to the business houses to pass the savings to the consumer. When it comes to increases, businesses are quick to change their price and lifting up and saying everybody, oh, this thing has gone up, we are increasing our you know, prices. But when a reduction is coming, they are very slow in implementing. So this reason, for this reason alone, we are trying to go out into the shops now. We are in discussion with government. As soon as the government makes fundings available with a new order, our team will now be out in the shops as usual. Business houses, we are now appealing to you that you start passing the cost savings and start reducing the prices that you need to pass it on to the consumers. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Residents of Port Mosby have been urged to report shops selling expired goods on their shelves to the NCDC City Authority, so the shops will be dealt with accordingly. This was announced by the city manager, Ravu Frank. Selling of expired goods on the shelves of shops operating in the nation's capital is becoming a great concern. Business houses have been issued notices to close their doors for not complying with the regulations of the trade license. And city city manager Ravu Frank highlighted that the health officers have been tasked to inspect shops as to ensure people's health are protected comply and then we reopen that's the law so we've been doing that we have to protect the interest and the health of the public that every good that they're selling or food item or whatever has got to be uh, healthy uh, within the prescribed uh, date for sale so we affected that and uh, some shops have been shut so until they comply they will remain closed he said businesses have to comply and made an appeal to business houses to clean up their shelves from expired goods. Big challenge. And so while I'm on air, uh, I'd like to uh, sort of appeal to any business houses or any uh, shop owners uh, that you need to clean your shelves. If you have expired goods, you need to clean it. You don't want to. I have our officers come in and shut your shop because we will affect the law. And if the shops are selling uh, expired goods, we will, we, will, we will close it. So we've started this borough and we're going to roll it out through the city. So if uh, uh, business houses can hear that. Mr. Frank also urged city residents to report shops selling expired goods. 
Control out the city civil rights news, and within the city civil rights, there's uh, various divisions and departments, and their contact numbers there. So they basically can uh, uh, contact those uh, uh, persons, the health chief health surveyor or the uh, compliance officers in NCDC, licensing officers, and report this. Uh, issues or <coughs> uh, shops that are not comply, report it to us so we can take the necessary uh, uh, actions. Uh, otherwise, come to City Hall and see our officers and we will basically attend to those issues. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Bougainville Police Services Commissioner is in Port Mosby for consultation talks with the Royal PNG Constabulary and New Zealand Police on a policing program that is currently running in Bougainville. Chief of Bougainville Police Francis Tokura spoke about this consultation meet in an interview with this newsroom today. The policing program by New Zealand Police was initiated in 2004 after the peace agreement was signed. Chief Takura explains on the purpose of this policing program. Uh, the purpose of this particular program was actually to support the Bougainville Police Service, which was recently which was created around that time, uh, post-crisis, on um, community based basically on uh, community policing. After some reviews, it was decided that the policy program be handed over to the Bougainville Police Service. Um, run under the Bougainville Police Service um, Policy Program, BCPP. It has been on for quite a long time. Um, in 2001, we decided, after we did some review, decided that the program was now handed over to the Bougainville Police Service. We've now changed the the, the program not so much um, a total change, but uh, we've now taken over the running of the community auxiliary police in Bougainville. According to Chief Takura, the current community auxiliary policing program expires in June of this year. However, after a successful consultation meeting with the New Zealand Police and the Royal PNG Constabulary yesterday, it will be renewed, as explained by Chief Takura. The, the purpose of the meeting that we had yesterday was uh, their interest into extending the program for another uh, four years um, on the new program, Bougainville Policing um, Partnership. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The Department of Personal Management is set to see more qualified and trained people in the public service. One of the ways in improving service delivery is to have public servants trained properly in managing and handling of staff and state assets while implementing government policies. Acting Deputy Secretary Policy from the Department of Personal Management, Alison Kalimet, made it known in a recent graduation of 27 participants in Mount Hagen, Western Highlands Province. The participants and attendees were told that under the Department of Personal Management Secretary, Taya San San, there was work being done to improve service delivery in provinces and districts, and that is in partnership with the Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance, or PILAG. There was a submission that was made by the CEO to the National Executive Council and uh, to come up with a, a training policy for all the public uh, public sector. So that was uh, approved uh, through an NECD 765 of 21. Kalimet also made it clear that those who want to be public servants would require attending PILAG courses. He commended PILAG CEO Michael Borobe for carrying out trainings in many parts of the country through the regional offices. So I'm happy to state here that in responding to this important government policy directive, CEO has reviewed and restructured his training programs and scheduled deliver, deliver, deliveries. And as such, I'm pleased to say that all CLAP training programs are properly structured and aligned well with the PNG qualification framework and all other policy directives emanating from the Department of Personal Management and, other, and all other relevant uh, agencies of state. This policy now makes CLAC review and uh, restructured courses mandatory and imperative for all serving and aspiring public servants. PILAG CEO Michael Borobe was also congratulated for having the National Executive Council reappoint him for another four years as CEO. 
Natasha Ovoy, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Start your day the smart way with the new Smart Start Breakfast Biscuit. Whether you are busy or on a budget, Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits gives you a healthy and affordable breakfast to set you up for school or play. Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits are fortified with essential vitamins for body or brain health. They contain vitamin A for healthy growth and development, vitamin B6 for healthy metabolism, immune system and brain development, and vitamin B12 for nerve and cell health. Proudly made by Paradise Foods. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. Telecom PNG Limited will be hosting the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum on Monday, 29th May 2023 to test day 1st June 2023 at the Hilton Hotel, Port Mosby. Theme, Reimagining Service Excellence, Ubiquity and Resilience in the Post-COVID Pacifica. Since the COVID outbreak which closed borders around the world, the forum will focus on strengthening ties between our regional partners in the light of ongoing technological advancement in telecommunications and accelerating progress growth in island countries. Join us and be part of the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum. Call our event team now to secure your sponsorship package on 3004010 or email events at telecom.com.pg for more information. Vocal Fusion Season 10, the audition tour begins. Lay City, get ready. We get to kick off the audition tour in your city on Saturday, 27th May. Mount Hagen on Saturday, 3rd June. Kokopo on Saturday, 10th June. Alatau on Saturday, 17th June. And the ending audition tour in Port Moresby on Saturday, 24th and Sunday, 25th June. MTV's Vocal Fusion Season 10, the audition tour. Warm up those vocals and be ready to make your way to one of the audition centers and try out for place in the competition. See you there. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Royal PNG Constabulary and PNG Datako Limited have signed a memorandum of understanding today in a bid to further improve and support the constabulary's aspirations to move into the digital space in their operations nationwide. Commissioner, thank you. Uh... The significant event had Commissioner of Police David Manning and PNG Data Co. Limited CEO Paul Comboy jointly signed the MOU witnessed by senior members of the constabulary. According to CEO Comboy, this move is a critical and timely one. He went on to elaborate further on the significance of this MOU. Uh, for this critical digital infrastructure, it is very, very vital for us to partner with the state agency to be able to secure them properly for the operation of this country. It's important for us to find a partnership that can be able to help us to secure all this infrastructure. So that is primary objective number one for Data Core in our partnership uh, with the police. 
PNG Data Co. Limited and the RPNGC initially had a similar MOU signed back in 2018. However, the new MOU will now benefit policing work in all provinces, including the autonomous region of Bougainville. We have started this relationship back in 2018 uh, through the understanding of uh, landing of the submarine cable in Killer Barracks. Uh, this is not a new relationship we are having with uh, the police. According to the Commissioner of Police, David Manning, this partnership will not only benefit the work of the constabulary, but that of the people of PNG. What the new MOU now allows us to do for, for Dadako, and as far as the RPNGC is concerned, is provide the digital services um, to the constabulary. Um, and let me remind our, our, uh, our people that any benefits that are drawn out of this partnership have a, has a flow and effect to our people. The MOU will now better enable and further enhance the constabulary's aspirations to go digital with the recent launch of its website. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. All journalists in Papua New Guinea have been encouraged to be responsible in disseminating information daily for public consumption. They are being reminded that the media plays an important role in upholding democracy in the country. Chief Censor from the Office of Censorship, Jim Abani, made these remarks during the commemoration of the Press Freedom Day observed by journalism students and their lecturers at the University of Papua New Guinea yesterday. Mr. Abani said the work of journalism in Papua New Guinea need to be improved. The journalists and the media workers for providing the public attention, public critical information that is broadening our views of our country and the world. And it helps us as individuals or you as individuals to take accountable for what we disseminate at all times. He added that journalists are the voice of the people and must uphold their integrity as journalists in the way they report so as not to mislead or misinform the citizens. Content writers, producers, to be very mindful about the information that we disseminate. Deputy Secretary from the Information and Communication Technology Department, Flair Songol, also emphasized that more training is needed for journalism students who are studying at the University of Papua New Guinea and Divine Red University, as this will help them develop skills they will need when they are out in the fields carrying out their duties. The UPNG journalism students, with their lecturers and other dignitaries, observe the Press Freedom Day with the students beginning the day with a flow to four miles, creating awareness to the general public on the role of the media. Aspiring journalists were encouraged to put into practice what they have acquired at the university to uphold truth, transparency and promote values of free press in PNG. Jim John, National MTV News. The journalism and public relations trend under the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Papua New Guinea is looking forward to establishing a broadcast studio on campus to train journalism students. Executive Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Leo Marais, says this will help the students with their academic work and professional development. Chinese government to HMSC for the recent commitment to a project building of our new school of This new facility will provide our students with the state of art resources to support the academic program for academic programs and professional development. 
A partnership agreement has been signed to allow Papua New Guinea's tax office, the Internal Revenue Commission, to work closely with the country's leading superannuation provider, the National Superannuation Fund. Through a memorandum of understanding, the two entities will now work closely to share data on areas of mutual interest. Present for the signing was IRC Commissioner General Sam Coim and Nest Fund Chief Executive Officer Rajiv Sharma. Under the terms of the MOU, both organizations will announce their information sharing capabilities, enabling the IRC to better comply with the regulations and assess risk associated with salary packaging abuse by employees to their employers, and assist the fund in their roles to ensure that their contributing employers are being compliant. According to Commissioner General Coim, the IRC will welcomes the collaboration and acknowledges the fund's willingness in facilitating IRC's request for similar terms under the agreement. Nest Fund CEO also shared similar sentiments, highlighting the positive opportunities that are available through this strategic partnership. He said it is in the fund's best interest to partner with key stakeholders to ensure they remain compliant relevant and competitive in the ever-changing business environment in this part of the world. Through this partnership, information to be shared with the IRC will include a list of names of registered employers with employees contributing to NAS Fund, aggregate number of employees for each of the registered employers, and a list of contractors engaged by NAS Fund, amount of contributions received from its employer in a year, and to specify the aggregate employer portion and the aggregate voluntary portion, if any. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Papua New Guinea is all set to host the first time ever International Special Economic Zone Summit in Port Mosby, starting Sunday, the 7th of May, 2023. The summit is hosted by the Marape government through the Department of International Trade and Investment. Specific details of events that will be taking place during the summit were announced today. The three-day summit will commence on Sunday with Prime Minister James Marape officiating. It costs around 1.5 million kina to stage this summit. Over 400 delegates from within PNG and overseas are expected to attend. And as of this week, delegates from Japan have already arrived in Port Mosby. The three-day summit will see invited country representatives defining their own country's development and success on special economic zone projects. Minister Maru mentioned that PNG has no policies and master plan in place for special economic zone projects for the country. Thus, the summit will be a learning opportunity to learn and embark on our own to attract foreign investors. Vice Minister for International Trade and Investment, Kesi Sawang, described the summit as a unique opportunity. The Department of International Trade and Investment Secretary Jacinta Warakai Manua spoke on the outcomes and benefits of the summit. Minister Maru commended the Mora Peroso government for the support. And now taking a look at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yukina was buying 0.2765 US dollars, 0 0.4130 Australian dollars, 0.2421 Euro and 36.76 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed lower, Copper closed lower, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed lower. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. 
National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. Share the love with Gala Ice Cream, Gala Cone Ice Creams, Gala Stick Ice Creams, and Gala Classic Tub Ice Creams. Happiness begins with the Gala range of fun flavors which create taste adventures and excitement with every bite. Treat yourself. Share with a friend while chilling. The whole family will enjoy. Everyone has their favorite. Which one is yours? Share the love with Gala Ice Creams. Gala, Gala, yum. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with NAS fun. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Immunization is the best way we can protect kids from dangerous diseases like measles, rubella, and polio. You see, immunization shields kids so they don't get sick. And when all kids are immunized, it works even better. So when you get your child vaccinated, you are also helping protect everyone. Every child in PNG deserves to grow up healthy. Visit your local clinic today. Immunization. You're gorgeous, mom. Love you, mom. Love you, mama. Spoil the beautiful mom in your life with cosmetic bargains from the Prime Bell Home Center's Mama's Yay Sale. There's up to 25% off with ankle sets, 25 kilo each. Plus, up to 50% off room sprays, diffusers, and candles. With a bargain from the Prime Bell Home Center's Mama's Yay Sale. Now on at the Prime Bell Home Center's Nationwide. Happy Mama's Yay! Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mom. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. House and Home highlights various details of family living and lifestyle such as cooking, leisure sports, fitness, fashion, gardening, sewing, and projects that you can do yourself for the improvement of your home. Join us every Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. only on your number one to watch, MTV. This May, catch all the action from the HSBC Rugby Sevens, starting this Friday. Power, presence and pace. Watch the final France Sevens men's and women's, starting Friday 12th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Saturday 13th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sunday 14th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. London's men's matches, Saturday 20th May, Sunday 21st May, Stay tuned for the 7 Series action right here on your number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. The recent Highlands Regional Consultation by the Special Parliamentary Committee on the 2022 general elections has exposed some issues affecting free, fair and safe elections for all. Some of the key issues were pointed out by attendees from the Highlands provinces. The Special Parliamentary Committee Chairman, Alan Bird, said there were interesting findings that would be noted for attention by the government and relevant stakeholders. During the two-day meeting, there were certain issues in the Highlands politics that affected the formal election process. Block voting was one issue identified, where a candidate or sitting MP claimed all ballots in their council ward as private, which electoral commission officers and security personnel tended to allow. However, such practices were not supposed to happen in a democracy. Another issue was the delay in printing and publishing of electoral rolls for people to check if their names were on it or not in order to do corrections before the final printing got released for polling.
And an additional issue pointed out was the delivering of ballot papers. It was also discussed if one-day polling was okay for the Highlands, which some said it was okay because it would prevent double voting. It is understood that the Highlands region has some unique practices when it comes to the general elections, where tribalism, threats, bribery and other factors affect the voters' decisions. With the consultation, the people from the Highlands should expect some positive changes come the 2027 elections. Natasha Ovoy, National, MTV News. A complete ban on betel nut selling and chewing in main centers of the nation's capital will come into effect starting Monday, the 7th of May, for the purpose of having a clean and healthy city. This was revealed by the NCDC city manager, Ravel Frank, yesterday at the City Hall in Port Mosby. An appeal has been made by the city manager to the city residents to be responsible chewers and sellers of betel nut. Betel nut chewers, you know, spit onto the, it's unhealthy, it's unhealthy. Uh, I'm also getting uh, uh, information from our health experts that, you know, uh, TB basically uh, can be contracted by uh, spittum. <clears throat> so I'd like to appeal to everyone. Uh, when you're chewing, perhaps you can uh, uh, chew at your home. Or if you're chewing, be responsible. You, you take care of your own waste. Huh? Don't just throw it out, out the window or just spit out of the window. I'd like to every citizen, whether you're a public servant, you're a private sector employee, uh, you're a top government uh, bureaucrat or a government official, we all have. It's just a personal hygiene responsibility. Mr. Frank highlighted that spitting of betel nut at public places is posing a threat to the health and hygiene of everyone and needs to be addressed. Back the law, so there won't be any boy sales or boy consumption in the CBD areas, um, starting with Boroko and also downtown CBD. There will not be any boy sales and no betel nut consumption. If you want to consume your betel nut, you will have to consume it and then... Uh, or chew it and then uh, you should not litter, litter the place, not pe speed or whatever. Uh, so that's going to come online. I'm just telling everyone uh, that uh, we'll start with these this two CBDs and roll it out to other CBDs as well. Following the city manager's announcement on the ban on betel nut, a food campaign was staged today informing the public that by Monday, the 7th of May, there will be no selling or chewing of betel nut at the central business districts or areas around the city. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Meanwhile, NCDC City Manager Ravel Frank has revealed that the city authority is currently at work to address the drainage system issues in the nation's capital. Poor drainage system in the country's nation's capital has been an issue discussed widely, especially when the city experiences heavy downpour. The city authority is always blamed for the issue of flooding due to the drainage that exists around the city. The city manager, Ravel Frank, in an interview has revealed that they are at work to address this issue. You will see some of the drainage... Uh, like we're going to stop and shop, we improve the drain hall uh, underpass there and soon the others will come online but uh, you will see uh, some of the drainage, open line drains, now people are cleaning so we've already started the process of cleaning the drains. Mr. Frank also pointed out that mismanagement of waste by the city residents is one of the contributing factors towards damaging the drainage system and is appealing to the residents to be responsible when disposing of their rubbish. A lot of uh, plastic cups and you know, containers uh, are all thrown into the drainage uh, reserves or drainage. Uh, uh, and they all end up on the roads. Uh, we'd like to appeal to every citizen uh, <clears throat> to uh, collect your waste and put them 
perhaps in a bag, and our waste people can pick it up. You know, if if our waste people are not collecting the waste, please uh, report the matters to my office so that we can get the contractors to come and pick it up. But with advice, we'd like to encourage, and I'd like to appeal <coughs> to the citizens to uh, not to throw rubbish in the drains because once the rubbish is in the drain, uh, the water carries it and it goes clog clogs a particular section of the road, then flooding happens. So it has ripple effects and damages. So we'd like to appeal to every citizen, even if you are in the bus, maybe hold on to your waste and then put it in your bag and then as you get out of the bus, you can take your waste to your house or if you see a rubbish bin in the public areas, we will be slowly putting uh, rubbish bin in the public areas. Throw your rubbish there. Uh, treat the roads as your home as well. Uh, we'd like to encourage every citizen, you know, from school children going up to. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. And moving to overseas news now, and leaked documents reveal that business giant Adani tried to set up coal ventures in Myanmar the same day it vowed to cut ties the military junta. Adani's had commercial ties with uh, the Myanmar military since 2019. It decided to invest in a port in Yangon, an international terminal. Uh, and that has resulted in some $90 million uh, US uh, in fees going to a military control conglomerate, uh, which is subject to sanctions all around the world, including uh, by the Australian government. Uh, they slapped sanctions on it in uh, just early this year. Now, since the coup in 2021, uh, Adani's come under increasing pressure to get out of bed, so to speak, with the uh, Myanmar military and stop funding it through this project. The UN warned it in 2019 that it was at risk of being linked to human rights violations and war crimes by funding the military. So in October 2021, Adani said that it would dump the investment and exit the country. Now, we've obtained leaked documents uh, from a human rights group, Justice for Myanmar, which show, despite its public stance, its public disavowal of the junta, it's continued to engage with military leaders and continued to plough tens of millions of dollars into this port. And last year, an Adani executive wrote to a sanctioned uh, regime leader, uh, reassuring him that it was committed to, the, to what they said was a prestigious project. It was actually appealing for tax breaks. A 13-year-old boy has been arrested on suspicion of shooting dead eight children and a security guard in the capital of Serbia. A 13-year-old boy is led away by police. He's the main suspect in a mass shooting at one of the best state schools in Belgrade. He came to school with two guns. He fired at the security guard and three girls standing in the hallway. I was walking up the stairs, and while I was walking up, I could hear a sound, and I thought it was maybe boys, some kids throwing firecrackers, and that they were having fun. But then I could hear it closer, and the sound was coming from in front of the school. And then I saw the security guard falling to the ground, so I quickly ran from where I was. I didn't want to go upstairs anymore. I didn't know who was up there. He then walked into a history class where he shot the teacher before turning his weapon on his fellow students. Police say the shooter planned the attack a month in advance and had drawn up a list of children to target. The 13-year-old is being put in a specialist psychiatric facility. He's alleged to have used two guns belonging to his father. Both his parents have since been arrested. All day, people have come to pay their respects to those who were shot. There's a deep sense of shock and sadness here. This is normally a lively part of town, but the people who live here say it's never felt so quiet. They're struggling to understand how a day at school turned into a nightmare. With candles and flowers, this city is mourning its dead. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us.
Accept the challenge. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. Vitamin A deficiency reduces kids' ability to fight dangerous diseases. Make sure your children aged 6 to 59 months get drops of vitamin A at a health post or immunization site near you. There's a sense of pride when you're able to do something right, a financial decision that has just really good benefits. With Bisky Life Insurance, there's that alleviation of of that worry when you pass away. The benefits of the BSB Life Insurance would meet those expenses on behalf of my family. If you're young and you have kids, you owe it to your children to make sure they're not left behind when you pass on. With you for life. This is a call out to all telecommunication organization. The Telecom Limited will be hosting the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum on Monday 29th May 2023 to test day 1st June 2023 at the Hilton Hotel Port Mosby. Team Reimagining Service Excellence, Ubiquity and Resilience in a Post-COVID Pacifica. Call our organizing team now to secure your sponsorships package on 3004010 or email events at telecom.com.pg for more information. Join us and be part of the first ever Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum in Port Moresby. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mom. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. Ta'alofa lover and warm Pacific greetings. Welcome to the Pacific. My name is Talia Olatia. From the many villages and islands across our great blue Moana, the Pacific will keep you connected to our region. Our trusted reporters and camera people in country have been working really hard to help tell the stories of our Pacific, our culture, our people, our resilience, our Pacific way. The Pacific, Monday at 7.30 p.m. Right here on your number one to watch, MTV. Join us every test day at 7 p.m. where we bring you all your sporting yeah, updates, domestic and international stories of different athletes, hopefully we can get to defend the goal. and sporting debates. It's going to be an exciting uh, tournament. Right here on your number one to watch MTV. Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The PNG Open Golf Tournament started today in Port Mosby, attracting 51 professional golfers from Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. Last year's winner Peter Crook is also participating in the tournament to defend his title. Price money for this year's event is 450,000 kina, which is 180,000 Australian dollars. The last tournament of the PNG Golf Open event was held in 2019 and went on hold for four years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today's special guest, Prime Minister James Morape, did the start of the competition where he was among the 84 infield golfers from PNG, Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. Day one today of the PNG Open, um, so we've got 84 in the field this year, so first time uh, the event's being held after a four year hiatus, obviously during COVID-19. Uh, we've got 51 professionals from Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia here. 
uh, including in the draw we've got uh, our reigning champion Peter Cook along with um, Paul Spargo, Michael Wright and quite a few of the other uh, previous champions. So great, great field uh, for our first event back after quite a few years. We've got the Prime Minister James Marakpi out there right now playing so honoured to have him jump on board and he uh, qualified to be able to play. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's great to have the event back. So Today's event witnessed the winners from four years ago in the likes of Brad Moves, Corey Crawford, Daniel Gale and Australia's Peter Cook, who are among 84 other golfers to defend their 2019 title. Day one of four, um, so the next two days um, it's a, an open field, everybody's plays and then after Friday we, we cut to the top 50. Um, so unfortunately one of the professionals out of the 51 uh, will, will not make it um, and then they go into a shootout on, Wednesday, uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So around about 4 o'clock on Sunday we'll, we'll be uh, rain, uh, crowning our next champion. Among golfers from Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia, PNG leading professional golfers, both male and female, were also present to compete amongst some of the best golfers in the region. This year um, we, we continue to be a tier two event and this year it's 450,000 kina worth of prize money, so 180,000 Australian. Um, yeah, so a, a decent prize pool on that one. The golfers are competing for prize money of 180,000 Australian dollars. General Manager for Royal Port Mosby Golf Club, Josh Dixon, said the event is a good start to all other upcoming events in the future. Godwin Eki, True Kai Sports. Meanwhile, President for the Royal Port Mosby Golf Club, Josh Dixon, said they are now preparing to host the PGA Legend Tournament, which is a Port Mosby Classic. He said the Open PNG Golf title that started today is also a lead-up event. Coming this September, we actually have a PGA Legends event, so the Port Moresby Classic. So we've signed a three-year agreement with the PGA to bring the Legends. So the players in the Legends, the previous players from here, um, so Peter Cook, Peter Senior, so it's a flow-on event from the one that's in Lay, so the PNG Seniors. So it's starting to generate people wanting to come back here. We've got a lot of the ex-players that have been here before loving coming back to PNG for the hospitality and the people and obviously the course that we have here, but a lot of the juniors first time and, and they're amazed of the, the facility, but also the generosity of the Papua New Guinean people as well. So it, it's going to be a, a yearly thing moving forward and we hope uh, to grow and grow. And our aim is 2025 for the 50th anniversary of independence that we get to the next level, which is tier one. And we'll have, along with yourselves, we'll have international TV coverage and, and put put PNG and our, our wonderful hospitality and people on the, on the map even more than we can. So. True Kai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Greatest sporting rivalry is back. Blues versus Maroons. Don't just watch, unleash. Join Abel's State of Origin promo. Win big prizes. Supported by Dell. Only spend a minimum of 200 Kina to enter the draw. Score your name and be a winner. Visit Abel Home and Office for more. One price nationwide. The 30th Australia Papua New Guinea Business Farm and Trade Expo will be held in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea from Monday 15 to Wednesday 17th May this year. Held annually, this major bilateral business farm is essential for anyone doing business between Australia and PNG. 
Join us in Port Moresby. Visit www.bcpng.org.pg or call the Business Council of PNG on 323-8465 or the Australia Park New Guinea Business Council on 323-7383 for more information. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck. Like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too. Like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me. Which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Yes, in fact, it is the first organized attempt to carry out humanitarian action in the history of, of mankind. Join us Monday night at 7 as we discuss the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. Logistics is a major issue when we want to attend to provinces or the communities that are faced with disaster. So we have uh, almost 14 million volunteers in the globe. Monday night at 7. An Australian survivor. It was a new dawn as the harsh, relentless Australian outback, home to all manner of deadly species, became home to two new tribes. With an age old rivalry brains versus brawn. Survivor, tonight, 8 30 pm, right here on your number one to watch, MTV. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. Welcome back to Turkai Sports. According to club president for Desert Storm Kickboxing Club, Nelson Samson, in an interview with MTV's Turkai Sports yesterday, said the number of young youths have increased over the last 12 months and are now training and fighting under his kickboxing club. He said many of the youths come from the streets and have chosen to leave their bad behaviors and do something better. More than 30 kickboxers that train and fight under the Desert Storm Kickboxing Club are youths from the streets and settlements who have in the past gotten themselves involved in illegal activities. They are now getting involved in activities such as kickboxing as they see that this will help change their bad behavior and attitude. According to Nelson, each of the student or fighter have their own story to tell, where they all come from different backgrounds, but have all come for one reason, and that is to have some form of change in their life. Not only this, but many of the youths have decided to pull away from illegal activities in the hope of making a way for a better future. While Samson has gone out of his way to mentor and educate the youths in settlements, he has also organized and assisted in kickboxing events where the youths were able to showcase and put their skills to test. As Desert Storm prepares to have all this young youth involved in the upcoming tournament in July, the young people are hoping that one day they can also, like their mentor Nelson Samson, represent PNG in the future. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now, and the NRL has completed its investigation into the lateral Mitchell racial abuse incident from early this year. But that spectator who did target Latrell Mitchell with the racial abuse is banned from attending future NRL games until he has both apologised to the South Sydney fullback and undertaken education and training programs. So the incident did occur at half time in the Panthers' win over the Rabbitohs. The teenager hurled a racial remark from the stands as Mitchell left the field, and that prompted widespread condemnation of the youngster's actions. And New South Wales Police gave him a formal warning a few days later. The NRL finalised its investigation yesterday. The Spectator now has five days to respond to the NRL's notice and findings. And that ends Truka Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us.
Sky Sports. True Kai Sports. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy. True inspiration through generations. Baby suit, the number one way long bunny simol pikinini, long sick missiles, rubella, na polio. Baby suit is a bunny simol pikinini, so all by long kiss him sick. So time you carry pikinini, long you go long house sick, long kiss him suit, you can help him long bunny simol get a line too. Or get the Pikinini inside long PNG, it had right long stop healthy. Current Pikinini belong you, go long house sick, long kissing vaccine. Immunization. Kids find any opportunity to smile, and when they smile, so do we. At Colgate, we want every child in PNG smiling. To all mums out there, encourage good brushing habits early on. It only takes you two minutes to teach your child how to brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Come on, mums, it's you first. Start a healthy habit with Colgate today. Brush, 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 two times a day. Brush with Colgate. Hello, PNG. Enjoy Telecom's cheap home data plans. The best value data plans in PNG. There's a data plan to suit every budget. 12 gigabytes for 15 kina. 50 gigabytes for 50 kina. 80 gigabytes for 75 kina. 125 gigabytes for 100 kina. Or 200 gigabytes for an incredible 150 kina only. Subscribe now to enjoy. Applicable for ADSL, GPON, and FWB customers. Only with Telecom, the home of cheap data plans. This May, catch all the action from the HSBC Rugby Sevens, starting this Friday. Power, presence and pace. Watch the final France Sevens men's and women's, starting Friday 12th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Saturday 13th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sunday 14th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. London's men's matches, Saturday 20th May, Sunday 21st May. Stay tuned for the 7 Series action right here on your number one to watch and TV. On Australian Survivor, it was a new dawn as the harsh, relentless Australian outback, home to all manner of deadly species, became home to two new tribes. With an age old rivalry brains versus brawn. Survivor. Tonight, 8.30 p.m., right here on your number one to watch, MTV. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Taking a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours, in the southern region, Port Mosby City is seeing evening showers and thunderstorms, then cloudy. Daru overnight rain showers and thunderstorms, then cloudy. Karama cloudy with overnight showers and possible thunderstorms. Alatal frequent rain showers and thunderstorms tonight, then cloudy. Popondeta cloudy with morning patchy rain drizzles. In the Momase region, Lay City, cloudy periods, overnight rain showers and thunderstorms. Medang, cloudy with overnight patchy rain. Wewek and Vanimo, Wewek, cloudy with overnight patchy rain. Vanimo, easing rain showers and thunderstorms, tonight then cloudy. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, brief showers and possible thunderstorms tonight, then partly cloudy. Cave and cloudy periods with morning shower or two. Cocopo and Rabal, cloudy periods with overnight showers and thunderstorms. 
Kimbe easing rain showers and thunderstorms tonight, then cloudy. Buka easing showers and possible thunderstorms, then partly cloudy. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, Mendi and Wabeg, rain showers and thunderstorms easing tonight, then morning fog. Gurkha and Kundiawa, rain showers and possible thunderstorms easing tonight, then morning fog. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Thursday, the 4th of May, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.